all, I am Varisha Irfan, a fourth year law student from Faculty of Law, Jamia Millia Islamia. And today I am going to be talking about prevention of hoarding of essential commodities in India. But first, let us understand the meaning of the words essential commodities and hoarding. Essential Commodities There is no fixed list of essential commodities in India. Section 2A subsection 2 of the Essential Commodities Act 1955 empowers the central government to add or subtract items from the list of essential commodities depending upon the prevailing circumstances. Hoarding Hoarding literally means to accumulate and hide or to store away. Hoarding of the essential commodities results in their shortage or lack of supply while the demands are high. This causes a significant rise in price which eventually results in exploitation of the consumers. Recently, the Supreme Court in a Suomoto case with regard to the management of COVID-19 crisis in redistribution of essential supplies and services during pandemic, observed that several critical drugs used to treat COVID-19 being sold at significantly inflated prices or in fake form is a condemnable attempt to exploit people's misery and profit from their helplessness. In India, there are two main legislations which deal with hoarding of essential commodities. First, is the Essential Commodities Act 1955 and second is the Prevention of Black Marketing and Maintenance of Supplies of Essential Commodities Act 1980. Let us first have a look at the provisions of the Essential Commodities Act 1955. Section 3 of the Essential Commodities Act empowers the central government to do various acts which are aimed at preventing hoarding. As per Section 9 of the Act, the contravention of the government orders given under Section 3 attracts a minimum sentence of 3 months but not more than 7 years along with fine. Section 10 of the Act makes a company liable to punishment if the company has contravened the orders of government under Section 3 and if the offence has been committed with consent or connivance of or is attributable to any neglect on the part of any director, manager, secretary or other officer of the company. Such director, manager, secretary or other officer shall also be deemed guilty of that offence. Section 10A of the Act makes all offences under the Act cognizable. Section 10C of the Act attaches a rebuttable presumption of mens rea. Every time a charge under this Act is brought against anyone, the court presumes guilty intention. The accused has a right to prove otherwise, but the standard of proof that the accused has to adhere to is not just preponderance of probability, but he has to prove the absence of guilty mind beyond reasonable doubt. Now let's talk about the provisions under Prevention of Black Marketing and Maintenance of Supplies of Essential Commodities Act 1980. Section 3 of the Prevention of Black Marketing and Maintenance of Supplies of Essential Commodities Act 1980 empowers both the central government and the state government to order preventive detention of a person with a view to prevent him from acting in any manner prejudicial to the maintenance of supplies of commodities essential to the community. The expression from acting in any manner prejudicial to the maintenance of supplies of commodities essential to the community means if someone commits or instigates 
any person to commit any offence punishable under the Essential Commodities Act 1955 or under any other law for the time being in force relating to the control of the production, supply or distribution of or trade and commerce in any essential commodity essential to the community or deals or instigates anyone to deal in an essential commodity or a commodity covered by such a law as mentioned earlier with an intention to make such a gain as would defeat the purpose of essential commodities act or any such law as previously mentioned. Let us now have a look at the guidelines for the preventive detention of the accused under the law. Section 8 of the Act makes it mandatory for the detaining authority to provide the person detained with the grounds of his detention and give him an opportunity to make a representation against the order to the appropriate government within three weeks from the date of detention. It is mandatory as per section 10 of the Act that the government place the grounds of detention before an advisory board constituted under the Act. In the proceedings before the advisory board, as per section 11 of the Act, the detained person has been given the right to present his arguments. However, this right does not extend to appearance through a legal practitioner. After the proceedings are over, the advisory board sends a report to the government within seven weeks from the date of detention. And if it is of the opinion that there are no sufficient grounds for detention, section 12 of the Act obliges the government to quash the detention order. The maximum period for which a detention can be made according to Section 13 of the Act, is six months from the date of detention. Apart from the safeguards mentioned in the Act, the constitutional safeguards against preventive detention are by default available to the detained person. Hence, the most supreme measure of preventive detention is also invoked to curb the menace of hoarding essential commodities. Mm -hmm. 